Eddie, thanks for joining us on the Dart Show podcast. On the eve of a, another World Darts Championship, how excited are you to be back at Ali Pali with fans? And what are you most looking forward to from this tournament? And what can the fans expect? Well, definitely looking forward to seeing the fans again. I mean, last year was so difficult. You know, we had it, it was taken away from us. We had it again, it was taken away. And this year, I think we're going to get the biggest World Championships we've ever seen. You know, in terms of the atmosphere, in terms of the performances from players, um, in terms of the viewing figures as well on Sky. I just think it's such a huge event for this time of year, isn't it? That, you know, with fans back this year, we've seen across all our sports bigger numbers now coming to events, better atmospheres. And we've also seen the talent performing at a higher level. Because the one thing that darts players did so well was give us great nights and great performances with nobody in the building. Yeah. Now, when they see the atmosphere and the noise at Ali Pali, I think we, we are going to get, you know, in every aspect, the best world championships we've ever had. How's your first eight months been as, as PDC official chairman with, with the amount of roles you do? How, how do you balance it all? Because I'm sure you want to be hands on with everything. But how much does time allow you to be focused on the dart side of things? Well, luckily, we've got a tremendous team. So although my dad has stepped down, he is a complete darts lunatic, groupie, nutcase, order of merit, stato, you know, um, he couldn't be more across the sport still. But from an operational level, Matt Porter, the whole team have done such an incredible job that probably my, you know, first spell as chairman hasn't been as hands on as it would normally have been without the pandemic, because we've all had to be so hands on deck with our individual, um, you know, departments, if you like, that we've had to put so much responsibility on the operational team and they've come through it with flying colours. So for us, you know, obviously my main focus is boxing and it's been so difficult to, to deal with the restrictions, you know, the changing in travel environments, whatever it may be, that of course, we've been across darts and, you know, the PDC board have done a fantastic job with the operational team. But as life turns back to normal, you know, I will be probably more hands on deck in 2022. And obviously you saw the announcement today about the prize pool increasing to 15 million next year. This is a sign of things to come. And I think one thing that's so impressive about what the PDC did was not only did they not reduce any prize money during the period they never even considered it and coming out even though we're not even out of the pandemic yet we make a statement today to actually increase that you know by over 10 percent and i think it's a a big statement from us and, and, and a sign of things to come it's our intention to keep on raising the bar in terms of prize money and obviously a huge amount to play for in, in a couple of weeks that leads me nicely on to the next question, actually, because when you when you took over as chairman, I think you said there's there's so much more to do with the game internationally and you still feel like you haven't felt hit the ceiling in the UK. So so obviously with the news today of the, the, the increase in prize money, what is your vision for, for darts going forward in the future? Well, the vision is global growth, but also you, you must never take your eye off your core market, which, of course, is the UK. And probably for the last five years, you keep on wondering can darts maintain its position in the sports marketplace? And the answer is yes, and some. It continues to grow, even in the UK, um, as well as so many other territories around the world. And that's really one of my focuses moving forward, is where can that growth take place? Because the ceiling for darts in the UK, which we thought we were at, we're clearly not, but we're, we're nowhere near that ceiling in other emerging markets. So it's to focus on the markets that we're actually in globally at the moment, but also in other markets that have potential. And for me, doing a lot of work in, in the US, I want to, to get that event over the line in 2022 at Madison Square Garden, because I'm not saying that the US could be, you know, a, a major market for, for darts, but I feel like we're always battling with the reputation of the sport commercially. And sometimes I go into meetings, talk about darts and almost get sniggered at by some TV executives 
they have no understanding of how big the viewing figures are. Mm-hmm. Second only to Premier League football. Yeah. And, it, you know, my, my dad will often take the mickey out of me and when I talk about boxing, and he'll say, we're doing three times the audience. And they are. Yet, no one would think that. So yeah. it's about garnering that respect, not just from the public, because the public appreciate darts, but from the commercial world. You know, whether it's the media, whether it's sponsors, whether it's broadcasters, because this is a major sport, a major sport that's delivering so much higher numbers than sports that the, the general public or executives would think are you know, blue chip sports. Mm-hmm. But darts is smashing them out of the park. And, and we need to make sure that we get that respect commercially. And you do that by making statements like today, like the World Championships, like new events globally, particularly events at iconic venues like Madison Square Garden. Very exciting to hear about that. And another part of a lot of the sports you're involved in is, is about telling the, the stories of the players um, and, get, as you say, getting that to a wider sporting fan base. So on that note, how good has Gerwin Price been for the sport, his, his story? And has he, has he changed the perception for a lot of people in sport about darts? I think Gerwin Price has come around at the perfect time. Because there was a period a few years ago where Van Gerwen was dominating everything and players weren't able to keep up with him and, and, and to be competitive. Not only has that changed with a number of players being able to be competitive, particularly in, in the recent run, you know, Gerwin Price has, has dominated. You know, he looks good, he's edgy, um, he's slightly controversial at times. He's exactly what you want and need when you're talking about creating personalities, characters from the sport. And there's, there's many of them, Peter Wright, and, you know, another, another great example of that as well. I feel that when you go into the Worlds this year, there's many players that, that are in position to be extremely competitive in these championships. And although Gerwin may be the, the front runner, there's also, uh, sorry, Gerwin Price, there's also Michael Van Gerwin, who some are saying, he, you know, has he lost his way? Does he still have the ability to, to compete now with Gerwin Price and others? And I think, you know, seeing him make a run would be great. And of course, the Fallon Sheriff story, which as we all know, is, is creating shockwaves and, and huge stories all around the world. And looking ahead to 2022, obviously the calendar has been released. We're hoping it's going to be more of a, a normal calendar for the, for the darts world. You've got an expanded women's series as well. And of course, you've, you've touched on it already, the, the prize money increase. Plenty to look forward to next year. Yeah, and you know the, the prize money increase, I got asked by the media, you know, do you think we'll see a million pound first prize for the World Championship one day? The answer is yes, but you know, this expansion is, is across many different levels, of course, for major tournaments like the Premier League, but also the Players' Championship as well, which is giving uh, players on the circuit an opportunity to earn more money whilst they're chasing their dreams to get into these major tournaments. So I think it's always important to invest at the top level because, of course, that's where it creates the headlines, but also invest in the lower level, you know, the, the semi-grassroots grassroots game where players are getting their tour card, being able to, to play competitively and being given the chance to move through the system and into the major events. And, and also, of course, you, know, you touched there on the, on the women's events, very important to the PDC board and the development of the game as well. And Fallon Sherrick has been, of course, the flag bearer of that. I mean, you see now growth in women's sport is, you know, is, is huge at the moment. From my side on boxing, you know, you've seen that it's gone from almost being a gimmick to a major part of the sport. And what's unique about darts is you've got Fallon Sherrick competing against men. Yeah. And that's so unique in sport. You, you don't see it. You know, you have the men's code and the women's code. So this is so unique and, and so important that she is allowed to inspire a generation of players who are given the opportunity to actually not follow in her footsteps because she probably didn't get that opportunity to, to be developed properly as a player. She's had to go out and do it and she's, she could be a one-off in that respect. But important that her as a role model is able to work with us to provide opportunity for female players. You mentioned Fallon Sherrett there, and that leads me on to one of the questions from one of my absent colleagues. We'll start the Premier League chat even earlier than the normal, usually <laughs> waiting until after the Worlds, but 
are all the Premier League participants all in place or is it to be finalised after the Worlds? And like you say, does Fallon have a chance of getting in? Well, absolutely to be finalised and, and we all sit down as a board post-World Championship and, and make our pick. And it, and it is a decision across the board, you know, and everybody will have the, their input. Um, I don't mind saying that commercially, Fallon Sherrick is, has to be in with a huge chance of making the Premier League. Um, but there is a real feeling from the board that that is one of our flagship events that is a reward for performance and consistency. And when Fallon had her first run in the world, I was one of those people on the board that probably said, I think she should go in the Premier League. And that was without her consistent performances, particularly recently. So with that, and with hopefully a good Worlds as well, I will probably be one of those members of the board who says, I think um, she should be seriously considered for that spot. And you have to look at our customers as well, not just our, our fans in the arenas, who I'm sure would like to see her as part of the Premier League, but our broadcasters and the media, who, who of course would, would support that as well. But it is, you know, always a position of the PDC board that it's a reward for a player that has achieved and has provided consistency throughout the season and not just, you know, when, when we talk about equality, putting a player in, in a position like that just because she's female actually goes against that sometimes. Yeah. And we have to reward her in the right way. But certainly from a commercial standpoint and the interest she's creating to the sport, the publicity, the exposure, the profile, that also can't be ignored. Look forward to, to that announcement after the Worlds. And a bit of a left field with this one, maybe, but we've seen a lot of YouTubers get into boxing. Is that something the PDC would ever consider? Because it does good numbers on digital platforms. Yeah, I mean, there's, a few, there's a few YouTubers who have uh, been involved in, in some... Uh, left field activity for the PDC, Jack Mate and a couple of the other guys as well. Um, the, I think the problem is is finding anyone with any kind of ability. Yeah. And that's the problem in boxing as well. You know, I mean, Jake Paul's out there now, who's, who's, who's terrible, but not horrendous. But yeah. again, it's finding anyone that can be remotely competitive. Listen, if there's a YouTuber out watching this right now, you've only got to look at the increase in prize money to know that Darts is an incredible way to make a living. Um, but they're also doing that quite well on YouTube as well. So I think you're more likely to see a YouTuber in the audience this year than up on the hockey. Right. Get Pratt's and all YouTubers there yeah. for next year, maybe. Um, one here from Michael Bridge, just before I, I finish up as well. Who would you fancy, uh, which darts player would you fancy going 12 rounds with a heavyweight? Well... He's not that tall, but I think the only one you could go for is Gerwin Price, isn't it? I mean, you know, That's he's a tank. To go for. You know, I mean, he's going to have good movement, good speed. I reckon, I reckon he weighs about 15 stone, something like that. Sorry, Gerwin, if you're a little bit less than that. But, you know, he's, he's a big lump, isn't he? So, yeah, I think he'd definitely be my pick. And fine, final couple of questions, always on our, our Christmas preview episode, we have a, a bit of a it's not darts um, kind of section. Just want to get a little bit of insight into Christmas at the Hearns, potentially, um, with the festive five. So I'm going to ask you five very quick Christmas questions and a, a quick fire answer, if that's all right with you. So what is Eddie Hearns' favourite Christmas film? Film. Home Alone. The best part oh, of the Or what? Bugsy Malone. Oh, okay. No, that's not a Christmas film, but it's always played over Christmas. Yeah, yeah. One of them. Uh, best part of a Christmas dinner? Um, pigs in blankets. Very popular answer, I think, that one. Uh, your favourite chocolate from whatever box you buy? I don't know if you're a Roses man, a Heroes man, or a Quality Street. I'm going to go for the Quality Street coconut. Coconut. Controversial yeah. choice, that one. Um, your favourite Christmas song? Um... Pogues. And finally, the best present you've ever received. Mm. Um, do you know what? It's as you get older, frighteningly, 
it's just it's just pants and socks <laughs> and when you're growing up you sort of think to yourself you see these elder people around the table or you know on the sofas open up socks and pants and they look so happy and you think our if you're a great actor you look genuinely over overjoyed with those pants and socks and for the last few years i found myself asking for pants and socks so for me the greatest present i can receive is pants and socks because i just you know and, and that's a sign that you're getting very very old so you know that that's that's a sign of the times these days well, I know what you'll get for Christmas then from everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie, thanks very much for joining us. Right, guys, this year I'm in charge of the walk-ons. So what I really need from all of you is to get in the spirit. Here we go. The green machine. Ah. Sure is. I've got to wear these. The Lancashire Rose. Get fired up, Rob. This will be for me. I'm back. What about this? No. That's supposed to be the fair open of the fox. Get it on. These will do, won't they? Bully boy, what are you going to aim for? Jose, did you get your fancy dress? Yes. Try and aim for the bullseye. Come on, Jose. <laughs> no chance, man. The Christmas spirit. It's all right, I promise you. <laughs> I love Christmas, Robbie. Johnny, wait. Johnny. Ready. Let's go. Oof. Good luck. <laughs>